Hello and welcome to part 2 of the Java RESTful tutorial series. In this part we will be starting our Java RESTful project. Along the way we will be going over frameworks that we will be using for our RESTful service. We will also be talking about best practices you should consider using. Let's go ahead and jump into the code. Alright, so as stated in part 1 of this tutorial series, we will be using Eclipse with Oracle Web Logic and all of our code will be stored on GitHub. So let's go ahead and start up our Eclipse. Select OK. So let's go ahead and go to File, go to New, and since this is the first time we're going to do this, I'm going to go to Other. And this will bring up a list of all of the projects that we can actually do. Now as you notice down here, there's actually a specific folder that is called web services and you can start here but I would recommend against doing that instead what I would recommend is go ahead and go to web and then what we want to do is create a dynamic web project and I'll explain the reason why we will go do this so for our specific project we're going to name it com as a company and we're going to say YouTube, that will be the channel, and this specific project will be for REST. Now I want you to click Next. Please do not hit Finish, because in certain uh, Eclipse versions, you will need to actually go through the whole thing. You don't need to do any changes here, so go ahead and hit Next. This is the important thing, is that we're going to need a web.xml file, so we want to have this checked so that when the project gets created we have a web.xml file and then at this point you can click finish once that's complete you'll notice that your project appears on the project explorer window and if you open it, this up this is the directory structure that you will have so let's take a moment to explain why you will want a dynamic web project as opposed to just a web service and the reason for that is that you want the extra flexibility a dynamic web project will give you a dynamic web project obviously can be all can host web pages and that's something that's really important and it, that flexibility is very useful later on you might need a uh, administrator front end to your API or RESTful web services many people call it, uh, the RESTful web services API's so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take advantage of the fact that we can host web pages on this project so I'm gonna go ahead and go to web contents this is where all of our HTML files or JSP files can go to. So I'll just do a right click, go to new, then I'm going to create a new HTML file. And then I will just name this index.html. And what I'm doing here is to ensure that this project is actually working. So I'm just going to create a quick HTML file, Java. RESTful service and then I'll go ahead and save that now down here is my web logic server so I'll just go ahead and right click go to add remove and then I will add this project onto the web logic server so if I go ahead and expand this it'll be right here so once again I'm gonna highlight my web logic server and I'm gonna go ahead and start running the server and let this boot up so what I'm doing here is I'm going to test to make sure my web logic or my project will run on a web logic server. Once your project says synchronize, go ahead and open up a web browser. And then all you need to do is to type local host colon 7001. And then you want to type slash. Let me just move this. And you want to type the project name. So you want to type com.youtube 
dot rest. And there we go. Here's the index.html file and it says Java RESTful service. So we know our web page is actually working. So let me move this a little bit again. At this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and start our Git repository. So let me go ahead and minimize these two things. Let's go ahead and start the GitHub client. And then I will also start navigating to where my project is. So it's under Oracle. It's also under J projects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag my project into here. Go ahead and close that down. And then I will say restful service tutorial. Well, let's just say Java in there as well. And then I can go ahead and create that. So there it is. Double click on that. And then I will do an initial commit. So first commit to the tutorial series. And there we go. There's our first commit. At this point, this is also a good time that I'm going to go ahead and do my first branch. And I'm going to name mine episode one. And then I'm going to go ahead and create this branch. Now I'm going to be working on the master branch, but if you so desire, you can always go to the episode one branch and go ahead and work with me on this at the same time. So for every video episode, I will create an, uh, an episode branch. So you can always go to the start of where my project is when you watch a video. And at the end of it, I'm going to create a tag to represent the end of the video. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with the master branch. And then we will go ahead and start working on our project. Whoops. Go ahead and minimize that and open up our web browser. Now let's go ahead and go look at the web.xml file. So if you open up web contents, it's in web.inf. And web.inf, this holds all of your library files. It also holds all of your structure and your metadata. And right here is the web.xml file, which I said is important. Now, if you double click on this, it'll bring you to this XML editor. I don't particularly find this very useful. So I go ahead and I'll close that out and I'll right click and I'll say open with and I'll say text editor. So if you go to the text editor, you'll go ahead and see all of the XML. Now you'll see that the root element is called web apps, which is fine. And then the elements below it are display name, which will give you our project name and also welcome file list okay and under welcome file list it has a whole bunch of children with these uh, HTML or JSP uh, pages and what this does is that if you just go ahead and go to the root of our web page it'll look at this in order and say if I have any of these I'll go ahead and uh, display that to you so if I went ahead and I copied this And then I said, the first one that I actually want you to pull up, if they don't specify a specific HTML file, is README. And I save that. Let's come down here. And let's create a new HTML file. And we'll name this README. We'll finish. We'll come down here. And we'll say README. Uh, let's go ahead and make this h1 and then slash h1 save that and now if we go ahead and do a refresh let me go ahead and do a republish Then we'll come over here and do a refresh. You'll notice that the readme file will show up first when we actually don't specify a specific file that we are looking for. So if I just go straight to the root, it'll come to this XML file and it'll say, well, the first file that I see is readme.html. That's the first file I'm going to show the user. So we're not going to uh, do too much with this. This is actually pretty useful. Instead, we're going to be adding to this in order to make our API.
But before we can do that, we actually need to download some library files to make this work. So let's go ahead and go to our web browser. And then we're going to type Java Jersey. And what you should come up with is Java dot or Jersey dot Java dot net. Go ahead and select that. And right here, it'll tell you this is a RESTful web service framework. You can go ahead and read that uh, on your own time if you so desire. But this is the framework that we're going to use to help make our lives easier. And the specific one that we want is the 1.7. They're, they're currently working on 2.0, but it's kind of in a alpha slash beta phase. So we're not going to go ahead and use that. Go ahead and select a 1.17. And what you want to do is you want to come down and you want to find the zip file right here. So go ahead and select that. And the zip file down here will start downloading. Now I've already downloaded the zip file. So if I go to my computer, user 308 tube, download. I've already got one of them downloaded. This is the second one that's currently being downloaded. And I went ahead and I extracted it to Oracle. And this is the extracted version of that zip file that I'm currently downloading. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and go in here. And I want to go into lib for libraries. And all these are the library files or the jar files that we're going to use for our RESTful web service. You'll notice a lot of these are jerseys. And then there's also these Jackson files. These, the Jackson files is actually a JSON parser. And we're not actually going to cover JSON in uh, part two, which is the current part we're on. But I just want you to recognize that uh, these Jackson files are actually used in the Jersey framework. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to drag all these files into this library file. So we'll just take all of this and then we want to drag it in here. Now this window will pop up and say, do you want to copy these files and do you, or do you want to link these files or create a reference to this folder? And you always want to create a copy because when we actually bundle this up and deploy it to a web server, we don't want a, a reference or a link to those files. We want it to be all self-contained. So go ahead and say copy. And what you'll see now is that this library file will have all of our uh, Java RESTful uh, libraries that we're going to need currently. So go ahead and close that out. And that's all you need to do in order to actually load library files into our project. So now that we have all of our library files within our project, we can actually define our RESTful web service. Now I'm not going to try to type this out. I've already got this uh, written out and I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to paste it in here and I'll just explain it. And that's what I would recommend that you do too, because it's easy to uh, have a typo. And if you have a typo, this won't work. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to define a servlet element. We're going to name it Jersey rest service. So that's the name of the servlet. And then we're going to define where it needs to go in order to actually find all of the libraries it needs to create this REST service. And basically this will point to our library files and the files in here again. So once that's done, it'll go ahead and tell it what package it needs. And also we'll tell it what project name it is. So this com.youtube.rest should match the name up here, the display name com.youtube.rest. And we will also specify that this will be the first servlet to boot up, which really isn't a problem since we only have one servlet and we're probably only going to stay with one servlet. On the next element, servlet mapping, this is also very important. You want the servlet names to be the same. So we said Jersey rest service down here. It should match exactly the same Jersey rest service. And what we're saying is that anything with in the, in the URL path with API, and uh, we have a wild card right here. So it's just looking for this and whatever comes afterwards, it doesn't matter. We want to be able to route it to our servlet code. If this doesn't uh, make any sense to you, it will in a second. Now that we've actually defined our RESTful web service, our API, 
which is basically a servlet in the back end. Let's go ahead and save that and let's go ahead and create some Java code for this servlet to run. So in your Java resources src file this is where all of your Java uh, code is going to be and all of your Java code is going to be in class files. So if you go ahead and right click say new and then go to class. So right here we're going to define a package. So a package can contain multiple classes and each class file usually has like a specific intent in which the code is there to do. So let's go ahead and name it com YouTube rest and I'm going to go ahead and name this status. And down here the class name I'm going to name with a capital V because all classes generally start with a capital letter underscore status. So what I'm in essence doing is we're going to create a, uh, a package with status and our first class is going to be version 1 status. Then I'm going to go ahead and click finish. So here's our package. Let me open this up a little bit. So here's our package in our first class file which is where our code's going to be is v1 status.java. The code that we're going to put into this class is exactly like what the name sounds. We're going to be returning the status of this API or the health of this API. So the first thing we're going to do inside this class is we're going to go ahead and import in the library files that we'll need. So we'll say java x dot ws dot rs and then you can say dot colon or sorry asterisk which is the wildcard so we're going to import in everything in that library file and then in here what we're going to well actually before we define anything in there we're going to define a path so we're going to define a root path in which this java class is going to get called and I'll explain this all once we get it all running so in here what we're going to say is we're going to say slash v1 slash status and then in here we're actually going to have our first method so this is going to be the first function that's going to get used and I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste this in here now this particular one wasn't included into our imports so you what you want to do is you want to go ahead and import this all you have to do is highlight over it and it'll tell you which ones that uh, will have uh, which one you need to import so what we have defined is the root path and once we've defined that in here we're going to have our first method our first method it's going to return a string and it's the title of this method is called return title and all it is is it's going to return this string right here so in order to do this uh, the annotations which is um, this is how uh, the RESTful web service knows what it needs to do annotations gives it context so uh, we're going to be looking for a get HTTP call and we're going to be producing text.html back out if this method gets called so if we've done this correctly what I'm going to go ahead and do down here is I'm going to go ahead and stop our server generally with big changes like this I would like to just stop the weblogic server and then we'll go ahead and start it back up okay that's finished as you can see down here it says synchronized so I'm going to go ahead whoops don't need that anymore I'm gonna go ahead and close this so this is our web browser and right now we are at the root so if we refresh this we're still going to our readme.html file but in here I have specified a URL path but before we can actually use this so let's let's go ahead yeah uh, let me explain this and then I will backtrack 
we're going to set API because we actually specified that first in our web.xml file. And then we're going to say v1 slash status. So v1 slash status. And it will return this method right here, Java web services. So you'll see that right here. So how does this all work? How did this URL path get us to this method? So let's go ahead and go back to our web.xml file in here. Now in here, we have said before that this is the structure of our project and it also holds our library files and our metadata. And right now you can think of this uh, web.xml file as a gatekeeper. It's like a, uh, it's like a person that's sitting there and it's waiting for all requests that comes into our project. And right now it has two duties, right? If you hit the root, it's going to come here and it's going to look at the list of all possible HTML files that it can return to you. And it's going to do it in order. Since there is a readme.html, if I hit the root of this web project, it's going to return to me readme.html. If I deleted readme.html, it will return index.html because that's the next on the list. The other thing it's going to do is that there is a servlet that's also running in the background. And in this, the servlet is looking for anything with the URL path that has the word API. So if I have API in my URL path, like I did here, what it's going to do, what this gatekeeper is going to do is says, oh, I see this API path. I'm going to go ahead and route it to the Java code, which is in our SRC file. So now it's in our Java code. So once it gets into our Java code, it needs to know where to go. So in our Java code, this right now is the root right here. So it starts at API. This would be the root in our Java code, in our servlet. So in our root, we specify that if you see v1 underscore status, and let me modify this. I'm going to put an asterisk there. So it's going to say v1 underscore status, and anything, anything else after it, it doesn't care. Please go ahead and route it into this public class. So that's what we've assigned it to do. So we said v1 underscore status here. It goes ahead and goes into this public class. Now sitting in this public class, we have a method and this method right now says anything that is a get HTTP call and this is a, an important thing to understand is that anytime you make a URL path call from a browser it's always a get so if I say uh, if it's a method of get which is always going to be true if you're going to hit it with a browser go ahead and produce text.html and here's the string that we're going to produce so as you can see, since it's a get, we're going to get the string back from our web browser. If I were to change this to, say, a post, and we're all pretty familiar with posts, right? Post is something that we would uh, see when we actually submit a form on a website. If I were to do that, and then I go ahead and hit refresh, and let the server catch up, it'll say method not allowed. And this is an error message that we get from the server. And the reason for that is that the HTML or the browser, it's doing a get on this URL path. But once it gets here, once it gets into this class, there is no get method. There is only a post method. And what the Jersey framework does is that it sees that and says, okay, there is nothing in here that I can actually crunch through. There is no method I can call. So I'm going to go ahead and send a generic error message down to the browser saying, there is no method in here that I can execute to give you data. So it's a nice generic error message that the Jersey framework is producing for you. So once again, if we go back to get and we go ahead and save that. Go ahead and refresh that. We'll get back our little string that we defined that we're going to return. Hopefully I explained that well enough for you to understand. But if I didn't, you can always uh, leave a question in the comments below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But before we wrap up this video, let's do one more to try to emphasize what this is doing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this and create another method. So first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to change the method name, obviously. So instead of returning a title, we're going to return the version of this API. 
and since we can't have two get methods sitting at the uh, at the root what I'm going to specify is where I'm going to go one down so I'm just going to go one down from the URL path you can think of this as a uh, like a directory structure so I'm going to go ahead and define another path so I'm going to say path and then I'm going to say this one I'm going to need slash version in order to get to this method it's still a get call and it's still going to produce me text.html and what this basically does is that uh, this handles encoding when I send a message back out to the browser so in this one I'm going to say version colon and I'm going to define a version but I'm going to probably do it this way which is probably the right way to do it I'm going to define a private oops private no caps static static means that there's only one instance of this it's a uh, resource saving measure so that uh, you know if, if if this gets called 10 times there's not going to be 10 of these variables there's only going to be one variable used all the time final which means that once uh, this app uh, this applet gets booted up it cannot be changed and then I'm going to define it as a string and it's going to be equal to uh, let's see 0 dot zero uh, one dot zero zero so and then semicolon private static final string oh I need to give it a name so uh, so let's see I can say API underscore ver version can't spell today and there we go so I'm gonna save that so it's going to be private, which means only this class can use it. It's static, which means there's only going to be one instance of it. Final meaning that this can be the only string that it knows. It can't be modified by other code. Um, it is a string variable, and that's the name of the variable, and that's the value it's going to hold. So down here, I'm going to say plus, and then let me just go ahead and copy that, paste that in there. Whoops. The quote needs to come back here and there we go so what this method is going to do is that if it sees v1 underscore status and then it sees slash version it's going to go ahead and run this method and this will be easier to understand once we go ahead and republish this again So right now, if we do v1 slash status, we get Java Web Services, which is the first method. But now if I add slash version, I'll go ahead and get the version number, which I defined in my second method. So basically, by adding a path again, I'm adding to the URL, uh, the, to the URL string so that I can uh, get other methods called. So... Once again, if I did status, I would get the first method and slash ver version, I would get the other, uh, the second method. And the only reason why this works is because I'm looking for a get HTTP call and obviously a web browser can uh, read text.html. So the root of this application is obviously com.youtube.rest so if I go here what I would get is the HTML file if I specify API I'll go ahead and go into the Java code and then I need to specify v1 underscore status to get into this specific Java class and sitting at the root of this class is a method called return title going one down nesting one down I have another method that's looking for a status slash versions. If I hit that, I will get the version of this uh, RESTful web service or API. This is a good stopping point for episode two. But before we uh, wrap up, I would like to kind of explain to you what this V1 is and why we're actually having V1 in here in our Java class as well. And the reason for this is that when we actually release our API, and it's being used eventually this class might need to be changed okay it, you know codes always evolving it's always changing to meet different needs right but 
trying to deprecate or trying to take code that is no longer useful or needs to be changed is very difficult once you actually release it and people are using it. So what we can do with this is uh, by versioning in the URL path, if we actually need to go ahead and change or move to a different type of uh, status, we can define a new Java class called v2 underscore status. And in our path, we would change this from v1 to v2. So in this way, we can actually have two versions of the status uh, class running. So version one will meet the old way in which users can continue to use it. And you allow them to be able to slowly transition over to version two. You can kind of tell them this is deprecated. We're going to support this for another six months. But after that, we're going to shut it down. So you have six months in which you can continue using this. The new version is running. So go ahead, you know, and when you have time, transition over to version two. And then we're going to go ahead and shut down version one. I, I, this is best practices, but I do prefer versioning in the URL path. It's something that's very simple to see. It's also very simple to troubleshoot. The last thing I want to cover, and it's another best practice, is, is I'm going to spend some time to uh, fill out the readme file. I really think that in an API, it's good to have a readme file. So if somebody actually gets to your uh, API, they can go to the readme file and you can kind of instruct them on how to use your API. That's something that's very important and it's very easy to do. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, fill this out, and I'll see you in a second. And I am back. As you can see, I've added uh, comments or notes into my readme file. So here they are, something simple, but it's easy to read. And I've also added comments to the Java code, something that all of us should do. And once again, this is another best practices thing. You know, once you're done with your code, it's always good to try to add comments whenever you can. So I'm going to go ahead and finish up by tagging this uh, finished episode. So I'm going to go down here and I'm not going to use GitHub for Windows because there is no ability to tag in here. So I'll go ahead, open up git bash, do an ls, okay, change directory, com.youtube, oops, com.youtube, come in here, if I do a git status, this is everything that I have changed that I actually still need to commit, so I'm going to do a git add dot, and then I'll do a git commit dash a dash, well actually just dash m dash m since I already did the add so I'm gonna say finished episode 2 of tutorial go ahead and added that in there and now I'm gonna do a tag so I'm gonna say get tag dash a for annotation and this one I'm gonna say episode one underscore actually it's not one it's two underscore finished dash m for message uh end of episode two for yeah just end of episode two and there we go so if i do a git tag i'll see that if i do a git branch now I'll see. Uh, I named that episode one. That was wrong, actually. So you're just going to have to uh, know that by watching the video. When I mean episode one, I actually mean episode two. Episode one was actually just an intro video. Go ahead and close that out. And I will go ahead and uh, send that up. So as you can see, here's the first initial commit. And then this is the one in which it, we saved everything, including the jar files, which is kind of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and publish that up. And there we go. And it's synced up. And it should be up on YouTube now. Let's just make sure. Do a refresh. Do I need... Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and publish up the episode one branch. There we go. I am really hoping to be able to keep these episodes to about a 20 to 25 minute time span, but occasionally I will run over depending on the kind of subjects that we're covering. But in part three, we will be covering annotations. We kind of already gone over a few of them with the path, the produce, 
and the uh, the get the post verbs that we're going to be using. I want to cover most of those before moving on to other things. And also we'll be introducing how to connect to a database and get data from a database because obviously an API that doesn't get data from some sort of data source can only have so much use. Hopefully we will be able to get through those in a uh, good time span. As always, thank you for your time and to my subscribers, thank you for your support.